it is my joy and my opportunity and my challenge <laughs> to talk with you about overcoming obstacles. And we surely feel that we have plenty of them right now. So we have good uh, grist for the mill. Um, the topic, my topic today is no obstacle can long prevail for one established in self-realization. And in these weeks, um, we are drawing inspiration, especially from the life of Paramahansa Yogananda, as we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of his arrival in the West. So I want to start by saying that, you know, when it comes to obstacles, <laughs> that it's easy uh, to place enlightened masters like Paramahansa Yogananda above us and think that what they did or who they became is due uh, only to their awakened consciousness and their good karma. And <laughs> there's a lot to say for that. But I also want to add that such masters and Yogananda was no exception, are the first ones to say that the same potential for mastery is within us all. There's a story that once Paramahansaji was counseling a disciple on how to meet an obstacle, how to meet a challenge in his life. On hearing his advice um, about what Yogananda said he should do, the disciple exclaimed, that's easy for you to say, you're a yoga master. And Paramahansaji responded, how do you think I became one? Sometimes we even imagine, you know, that such masters just really didn't even have obstacles, uh, at least of the magnitude that we do. And I have tried uh, to dispel that notion during this series by mentioning many of the obstacles he faced, both great and small. And just thinking about him on a personal level, I think helps us tune into, you know, the great number of obstacles that he faced, you know, reflect on the fact that he left his family, you know, his home, his friends, his beloved guru, and all of his spiritual companions, the school that he built and the students he served, as well as the only country he ever knew. And he traveled so far to a culture um, that was so different from his own um, to a foreign land where he no doubt uh, suffered culture shock. A humorous one that Phil Goldberg mentions in his uh, biography of Yogananda Ji <laughs> is that Yogananda was absolutely shocked to see a vendor on the street selling hot dogs for people to consume. <laughs> he wondered, what kind of country is this that I have come to? So when we look at his journey, we see that, you know, he just began serving and that the attendance at his talks started off small, sometimes just a handful of people, but it quickly grew into the thousands. And as his ministry grew, so did the need for supporting the study and practice of those students. It wasn't enough to just go talk to them. Then, you know, there had to be a way to serve them and to really um, nurture those seeds of realization that were being planted in America. So study groups formed, leaders were trained, and a few of his Swami friends were called over from India to help him with the work. Places to meet were rented and centers were founded across the country. Now, I know that well, that all of that required money, which was a constant concern and really could have been an uh, insurmountable obstacle, especially when Think of this, nine years after his arrival, when Yogananda was at the peak of building his work and establishing his centers, the stock market crashed and the Great Depression hit. When we look at his life, his obstacles were formidable and plenty. He encountered America's racism and xenophobia firsthand some um, muckraking 
newspaper in order to sell papers, uh, which was common at that time, just like we see it today, tried to portray him as the leader of a Hindu love cult, they called it, that was trying to seduce uh, innocent uh, white women. <laughs> he was betrayed by his best friend. And what else? The beautiful property in Encinitas, California that became the site for building the most gorgeous temple, the temple of his dreams. Then after a short time, slid off the cliff into the ocean and was beyond repair. So those are a few of the things that he encountered. And we can ask ourselves, you know, how did he find his way through such painful personal trials and turbulent global times? I mean, not only the depression, but then the um, second world war and all of the turmoil that came in his own country through the independence uh, movement in India. What can we learn from him? When I look at how he faced these difficulties and, difficulties and turned them into triumphs, I see, of course, great faith and realization and determination. And I want to talk about three strategies that I can see in his life and his work that I think can help us with what we're facing today. And those three strategies are perspective, purpose, and perseverance. Perspective, purpose, and perseverance. So one of the things that I note in reading about his life and his work and his challenges is that when he, at times when he was faced with a great disappointment or a seemingly intractable obstacles, he would retreat. And this is important distinction, not to run away, not to give up, but to pray up. He would stop, he would take a break, he would meditate deeply. Sometimes he would play. He would definitely pray, but he would open himself to new insight, to his ability to receive higher guidance and to gain a divine perspective of the situation based on spiritual truth. Now, great souls have always realized and told us, told us that this world is filled with sorrows as well as joys. So they advise us not to hold unwise expectations about the world, but to see it for what it is as a play of shadow and light of ever changing conditions, to see it as that no more and no less. And to understand as spiritual practitioners that our sadhana is really just this. It's learning how to live skillfully in this world of joy and sorrow, light and shadow, and perpetual change, how to apply principle to this situation, or as they often say, how to live in the world, but not of it, to not be overcome by the very nature of life in the world itself. And that sadhana, that spiritual practice is always for now. It's not, it's not for later. Sometimes I know it's tempting during this global pandemic to think, well, as soon as this is over, I will get on with my life. We can feel as if our very life is on hold, but it's not. This is the time for our deepest, most profound sadhana. So we have to get that perspective on our life. Paramahansa Yogananda said, troubles come, let them come. Troubles come, let them come. They will be your stepping stones for your upward climb. They will be your stepping stones for your upward climb. So that's a powerful thought. And I want to 
offer it today and so we can reflect on it and, and ask ourselves, how are my troubles a stepping stone? Or how can they be a stepping stone? How can they possibly be a stepping stone? How can the crisis that I face, the obstacles that I face, help me awaken to truth? Help me find freedom? Help me set the right priorities in my life. This is seeing our life experiences in perspective, in the light of higher purpose, never losing sight of what we're here for, which is to awaken spiritually and to serve. And regardless of outer conditions, that is always our purpose. That is always what we're here for. And once we recognize that and really gear our life in that direction, that is how we can turn life's disappointments into spiritual dividends because we have that intention. And that brings me to the second point that I saw in his journey, which is always this emphasis on being focused on living with higher purpose. Yogananda always kept his focus on living for and serving God or higher purpose. And when he did that, he was able to see obstacles in his life as opportunities for growth, for learning, and for redirecting his attention and his energy. So here's a secret about this that yogis know and we can use to our advantage. And that is at any time in life when we are fixed, um, are fixated even on purely personal aims with a strong attachment to outcome, let's call that what it is, self-will. <laughs> Anytime we're fixed on what we want and how we want it, obstacles in our path ultimately cause us then to lose heart and to lose energy. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can watch, watch it, watch it in your own life and see for yourself. But by contrast, when we are dedicated to serving life, to serving something higher that is beyond small self-interest, the self-discipline that's required to face challenges becomes a point of gathering energy, not losing it. This is what the Kriya Yoga path refers to as tapas. This is self-discipline. So we are serving life and when we're serving life, challenges that we face give us an opportunity to gather our energy, to gain energy that then makes possible the third strategy, which is perseverance. Yogananda did not give up. He, he gathered his energy at the time of obstacles and expanded his purpose. You know, when, when his beautiful temple fell into the sea, it, it, because it wasn't a temple for him, it was a temple for God and for God's purpose, he, he said, well, God was trying to show me that I shouldn't be satisfied with just one temple, that I should build many. And so he took it as a sign that he should go forth and build several temples that would serve more people. And that's exactly what he did. He persevered. So with the shield of dharma, the shield of dharma, higher purpose and right action, Yogananda was able to emerge victorious from the great obstacles and battles in his life and to persevere with that purpose. And I want to say, not just, he didn't just get by, he didn't just get through, but he was able to thrive in the midst of it serving thousands of souls in his lifetime and beyond. I want to talk from my heart to yours and tell you that I know that this time of great personal and global difficulties can be our own stepping stone 
to live more fully and to be more focused on living with higher purpose. Though the obstacles are great, the spirit of God within us and around us is far greater. So may you discover the true perspective of this time, see the divine willing to support you on your journey. May you be clear about your higher purpose to be here to awaken and to serve life. And may you persevere in the highest way, not just surviving, but may you thrive in your endeavors. Om, peace, peace, peace. Mm -hmm.